Hello, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. Open your King James Bible to Genesis chapter 6. We're, this Bible study is going to be on the end. You know, I was looking through uh, some stuff or some end times, and it kind of dawned on me. The Bible talks a lot about the end. A lot of it is in uh, the Old Testament. So let's get started. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Um, you could take a page out of history, and, um, you know, Chicago had 762 murders in 2016. That wasn't all the shootings, that was just the killings. Murders. 762. They won the uh, murder capital uh, of the United States last year. So people in Chicago can go, we're number one. We're number one. So is there anything new under the sun, as uh, King Solomon used to say? No. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now that word all, sometimes all doesn't mean all. We'll get to that in a minute. And God said unto Noah, The end. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And then he says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. So he says, The end of all flesh has come before me. Well, you know, the thing was, he told Noah to build an ark, and uh, there was eight of them that survived. So when he says the end of all flesh has come before me, there's an exception. You know, Noah's family. So all flesh didn't perish. Another example of this is Romans 3.23. Paul writes, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. So if all means all, that means Jesus sinned and he came short of the glory of God, right? Wrong. Romans 5:12. Wherefore as by one man, Adam, as by uh, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Right, so by, by one man sin entered into the world. That's why the, the virgin birth is so important. Um, because Christ didn't share the DNA of Adam kind. So, does that include Christ? You know, uh, does all mean all? And people love to say that. All means all. Well, it, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. But in Hebrews 4.15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And who's he talking about here? Christ. Christ was yet without sin. So when it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, it's the Bible says that Christ was yet without sin. So all does not necessarily always mean all. Sometimes it's a figure of speech. Just kind of keep that in mind. I actually did a, a video on that. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 9. 
Moses. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord God made with you, then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights, and neither did eat bread nor drink water. Um, forty days and forty nights. Where did we read that? Uh, Genesis. Uh, hopefully you've read it in Genesis. Remember the flood of Noah was forty days and forty nights, remember? Well, if you never read Genesis, you should. It's the foundation of the Bible. Uh, let's see. Genesis 7, 4. And yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. But that didn't, you know, that didn't happen to uh, Noah and his family, right? Um, in Jonah 3, 4, we read, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days in Nineveh shall be overthrown. Hmm. In Mark, I'm sorry, Matthew 4 and verse 2, And when he, Jesus, and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. Mark 1.13, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Hmm. Let's see, and then in Acts 3, Acts 1 and verse 3, to whom also he, was, he showed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, having been seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So, yeah, the, the Bible Bible mentions 40, 40 days a lot, considering, right? All right, so Moses went up to the mount for forty days, forty nights, and didn't eat any bread or drink water. Jesus did the same thing. It had to be supernatural, because you can't go 40 days without water. No way. Without the Lord. Uh, let's see, verse 10. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone, written with the finger of God, and on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, the day of the assembly. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from thence. For the people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image and of course when you um, continue reading the rest of the story Moses goes down they're worshiping a, a golden calf which you know didn't please the Lord and, and then Moses broke the tablets of stone did you know Moses broke the Ten Commandments yeah all right so in Deuteronomy chapter 28, there's a something the Lord warns about. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until, until he hath destroyed thee. One of these days I'm going to have to finish the Iron Kingdom series. Honestly, I'm kind of afraid to go into it. 
because most people choke on the meat of the Bible. They choke on it. It's it's sad. Uh, it's just it's sad. It really is. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Isn't that what's happening to the United States and Europe? They're, the Lord's bringing a nation against them from the ends of the earth, a nation whose tongue they don't understand. Go to Miami. Go to Los Angeles. Uh, Miami. The, the, you could go to Sears or J.C. Penney's or Walmart or Kmart or whatever, and they won't even speak English to you. I've been. I live there. It's one of the reasons why I left. When you go to L.A., last uh, I was in L.A. about 20 years ago, there were more Spanish-speaking radio stations than English. I had a minister, preacher, tell me that there were more Nungians, N-Y-G-U-E-N, I believe it's spelled. It's a common um, Vietnamese name. He said there's more Nungians in the phone book in Los Angeles than there were Smiths. I looked it up just to prove him wrong. And sure enough, he was right. There are more Vietnamese Nungians than there are Smiths in Los Angeles. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. That's what's happening in Europe now. You know, they're crying about all the, the crime with all the uh, Muslims. Well, guess what? You've got God's blessings for obedience, and then you've got his curses for disobedience. America and Europe are in the curse phase. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 22, verse 25. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him, your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all kindreds of the nation shall weep before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. Psalms chapter 37 Verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power. Boy, that's the European Union, Washington, D.C., London, everywhere. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off. The Bible says, Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. So would you rather have the mark of God or the mark of the beast? That's common, people. I remember I was telling people about the mark of the beast, and, and I believe the Lord showed me it was some type of microchip, like, oh, I don't know, 20, about 25 years ago. And people used to laugh at me. 
I tell you what, they got the technology today to implement the mark of the beast. They've got it. They've got it, people. All right, Psalms chapter 119, verse 31. I have stuck unto my testimonies. O oh Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. He, teach me, O oh Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I will keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall, I shall keep thy law, yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. He says, He, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I will keep it unto the end. Okay, Proverbs 14, chapter 14 and verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown. But the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, I've had people that Pray to God. I don't know what God they're praying to, but tell me that, you know, a woman has a right to choose to have an abortion, that sodomites should be able to get married and be able to adopt children. Of course, they, they don't want to adopt girls. They want to adopt boys. And, um, you know, well, you know, if witches are... You know, if in their heart they think it's right, they, they should be allowed to worship God their own way. Yeah, right. They should be able to kidnap children and sacrifice them on an altar to Satan, right? They should have freedom of religion. And these people think they're Christians. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but it but the end thereof are the ways of death. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation, that means extreme hatred, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven. It sounds like angels, people. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. That's, you know, one day I'm going to do a uh, Bible study on the day of the Lord and the day of the Christ. You wouldn't believe the number of people who think it's two different days. And, and this is what they teach in Bible colleges, a lot of them, that the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture and the day of the Lord is the second coming where he destroys everything. So, thus denying that Christ is Lord. I mean, if the day of Christ is not the day of the Lord, that means Christ isn't the Lord, right? 
And one day, everybody's knee is going to bow, and they're going to say, Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't know. All right, turn to Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 7. The more I study in Isaiah, the more I really appreciate it. I mean, I've always appreciated Isaiah, but it's, it's a, uh, I don't know. My opinion, I think uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, and Isaiah are the most difficult books in the Bible, but that's just my opinion. Some people say Revelation, but I don't know. All right, Isaiah 41, verse 7. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. Uh, wasn't Joseph a carpenter? Isn't Didn't they say when Jesus did some uh, miracles in the synagogue, and they says, is not this the, the carpenter's son? You know, and, and they were filled with indignation against Jesus. And Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except among his own people. I'm paraphrasing. And that's true. So Jesus was, uh, I guess he was a carpenter, right? That'll fit in with what I'm getting ready to read here. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. All right, go to Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 8. Remember this and show yourselves. Men, bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old. What former things of old? Oh, I don't know, the flood of Noah, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, that's a couple things. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. So what about these ravenous birds that are going to come? Well, let's take a look at Revelation 19, and verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And this is Christ, people. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Uh, didn't we just read a couple of verses prior to that about the, uh, about the uh, armies from the end of heaven? Oh, yeah. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And if you don't know that's Christ, 
What can I tell you? And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls, that's birds, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, that wrought miracles before them, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the her upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Say that three times real quick. And the fowls were filled with their flesh. Okay. So, Isaiah 46, verse 11, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Well, let's go back and read Isaiah 13 and verse 3 again in reference to what we had just read. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. That's Isaiah 13, 3. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdom's Kingdoms of nation, nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy, to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Now, you got to understand something. When you read this, the destruction of the wicked is going to be the salvation of the righteous. So, all right, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 29. You know, one of these days, i got to finish this, uh, the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, I'm start trying to do a lot of stuff on end time stuff because honestly, I think we're getting close. Yeah, I know. People have been saying this for 2,000 years. But I tell you what, there's never been the mark of the beast. I mean, seriously, they could do the mark of the beast now. And I think they're planning on it. Uh, one day your paper currency is going to collapse and they'll probably, uh, their solution, you see, what the government does is they create a problem that they already have a solution for. And the solution will be, hey, uh, mark of the beast. It's your ID, it's your bank account. It's your government benefits, it's your tax collection, it's your identification, it's everything. Just swear your allegiance to the beast. But uh, what can I tell you? And trust me, the churches, well, let's read what the Bible says about the churches. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 29. Shall I not visit these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. 
And what will you do in the end thereof? You know, there's a lot of people on TBN, TBN um, that claim to be prophets of the Lord. And the Bible says the prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? You know, people, you know, people send TBN preachers millions and millions and millions of dollars. And the people love to have it so. Take a look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 7. We're going to read the whole thing. You know, and churches will explain away the Old Testament. And I tell you what, if you want to see how God operates, go to the Old Testament. You know, everybody, I've had people actually tell me, well, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament is different. Huh? A different God? Really? Or he deals with things in different way. You know, read the book of Revelation. You think that's any different than what happened in Jeremiah or in the book of Judges? You know, read the book of Judges. Um, Israel sinned. God sent an oppressor. He says, oh, you, you don't want to live by my laws? I'm going to let you live by the devil's laws. See how you like it. And then the people would repent because they didn't like the people that were ruling over them, the devil's laws. And when the people repented, they gave God the glory, lived righteous lives for the most part. The Lord blessed them, made them fat and happy and rich. Then they forgot the Lord, went back to their old ways, and then the Lord sent some more oppressors. Well, we're in... I mean, just read the whole book of Judges. The, the whole thing is like that. And that's what America's coming... America's under judgment right now. And the European Union. Europe. You know? Europe could use a Martin Luther right now. Or a... Or a oh, England had some pretty great preachers, too. But... Um, Tyndale, that's who I was thinking of. Um, you know, in the days of old, if you got caught with a Bible in your own language, a lot of times you were burned at the stake. You think, and, and people won't even bother to pick up their Bibles and read it. People died to give us the Bible. People are too stinking lazy to read it. So, what can I tell you? All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 7. And I just got called a, a hateful Nazi. That's what people think of the Bible. The Bible is a book of hate. Yeah, it is. God hates hate evil, and wickedness. Ezekiel 7, verse 1, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, and end, the end, is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. It's called payback, people. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come, and end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. 
Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And if you don't know what an abomination is, an abomination is a sin that God really, 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 really hates. Um, a couple examples of these are uh, uh, witchcraft and sodomy. You want to worship the devil and be a sodomite? Fine. But God really hates those things. And I will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold, it is come. The morning has gone forth, the rod has blossomed, pride hath budded. Violence is risen up unto a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is come upon the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision, vision, for the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. Hmm. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready. But none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence, shall devour him. You know, famine comes first, and then pestilence, you know, disease always follows. Because when you don't have enough food, your body starts breaking down, and then every disease comes, you know, your body can't fight the disease. Verse 16, But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be as, as weak, shall be weak as water. Verse 18, they shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, sackcloth. And that's what people used to do. They used to take sackcloth and ashes and fast and pray um, to re for repentance. Boy, I wish some of these famous TV preachers would, would and uh, internet preachers would teach this stuff, but they don't. And some of these people are saying people don't even need to repent. Just repent of your unbelief. Well, should Satan repent of his unbelief in God? Satan believes in God? Sure he does. No. God wants us to repent of our sins, of our wickedness. And you know, there's people that are argue with me about that. Oh, God doesn't care about your sin and wickedness. He just wants you to believe in him. Ugh. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth and horror. Horror. People that like horror movies, they're going to have one. And horror shall cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty. But they made the images of their abominations, 
and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them, and I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robber shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Sounds like they're talking about Chicago, L.A., New York, Miami. What do you think? Listen to this carefully. Verse 24. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. Ooh. Isn't that what's happening to America and Europe today? The, the worst of the heathen are coming to our land. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation. And the hands of the people of land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Now here's an interesting thing. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. We're going to start in verse 2, and then we're going to uh, do 2, 3, 4, and then we're going to skip to verse 9, and then we're going to go to the New Testament. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But though, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And isn't that what's happening today? I mean, 200 years ago, for 5,000 and several hundred years, people were using horses and camels for transportation. And then in the last 200 years, we had trains and planes and cars and rocket ships. And, you know, it's just, it's amazing. The technological innovations that have come in the last 200 years. I mean, it's just utterly amazing. It said knowledge, you know, to the time of the end, many shall run to a fro and knowledge shall be increased. But it's not good knowledge. It's, it's you know, secular knowledge, ungodly knowledge. Then in verse 9, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. See, the book of Daniel was to be a book for the end. And there's a lot of things I don't understand. But you know what? When, when, when the, um, the Lord's going to pour out a spirit for people to understand all this stuff towards the end time. The wicked aren't going to understand but God's remnant will. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22. This is Jesus speaking now. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. What name is that? Well, in the Bible, 
My English Bible, King James, says Jesus. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Huh. Jesus says that we got to endure to the end to be saved. Isn't that interesting? I wonder why he says that. Actually, I know, but it just slays me that uh, uh, preachers will preach anything but except for what Jesus says, it seems like. Yes, we have to endure to the end. You know, the preachers want you to think, you just say a little sinner's prayer and go your way and no matter what you do or you're saved. That's it. And doesn't that's not what Jesus said. So All right, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. We're going to read the parable of Well, we're going to we're going to read some the parable of the wheat and the tares. I did a whole study on this. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Yeah, that was Adam and Eve. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also the weeds. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. That verse right there destroys the pre-trib rapture. Gather ye together first the tares, the weeds, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. You see, the weeds get burned bundled and burned first. Pre-trib rapture people say, oh, well, this is wrong because the, the wheat gets gathered into the barn and then the, 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 the weeds get burned. No. So, let's go to verse 36. That was, that was verse 30. Now let's go to verse 36 where Jesus explains, he interprets then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. The harvest is the end of the world. So in Matthew 24, 13, but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Right? 
Matthew 28, verse 20. Jesus speaking to the disciples, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, this word observe, you know, if, you, if you're observing a fight or a robbery in progress, I mean, you're just, modern English just means that you're watching, you know, you're, you're observing a crime in progress. You're not part of it. You're not trying to, you're not part of it. You're not stopping it. You're just watching. But this is different. Jesus says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. See, when Jesus told them to observe, he's, he's not just telling them just to look at it. He's telling them to do something. You know, observe. You know, see it and do. You know, don't just talk the talk. you got to walk the walk. There's a difference. Romans 111. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. Romans 416. Therefore it is a faith that ye might be by grace to the end of to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only that, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, I hate to tell you something, but Abraham is not the father of us all, uh, all of us. Okay. Father Abraham was not the father of the Canaanites. But when you read Galatians 3.29, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, those in Christ are the seed of Abraham. You know, people wake up. The tares hate the wheat. Romans 6.22 But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have borne your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Romans 10 and verse 4 For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, is Christ the end of the law for righteousness? Well, uh, you know, there's probably two ways to look at this. You're not going to be righteous by keeping the law. I don't care what the Noahides say. I don't care what the Jews say. I don't care what the Torah keepers say. Your righteousness is not in keeping the law. Period. And I shouldn't have to go into that. Your, your righteousness is your faith in Christ who did keep the law. Christ kept the law. Okay? But was Christ the end of all the laws? Uh, no. Christ was the end of the sacrificial the laws, the blood of law sacrifice, the blood of the bulls and goats, the temple. Was he at the end of the commandments? Uh, no. Matter of fact, Jesus gave us some new commandments. In the book of John 13 and verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Huh. Does that, you know, a new commandment. 
And I've mentioned this a bunch of other times, but I'm going to say it again. Matthew chapter 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, Christ, asked, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, so he's trying to trick him here. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So loving the Lord is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay? Now, if you live next door to a Satanist, somebody that hates God, I suggest you, you move so you don't have to love a Satanist. Okay? I mean, you know, common sense, people. So, Christ, Romans 10, 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Right? Right. All right. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 8, Who shall also confirm you unto the end? that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. How about 1 Timothy 1 and verse 5? Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. Now that word charity is sometimes the same words translated as love. If you have love, you'll have charity, and if, and if you have charity, you do it out of love. Unless you're like these uh, rich people that only do charity as a tax write-off, and then they only give it to organizations. They never give charity to individual people to help them. They only give money to charities to, so that the uh, head of the charity can fly around in his Learjet and buy a new Mercedes-Benz that the organization pays for. You know, there's uh, the, the United Way. There was one of the heads of the United Way that was making over a million dollars a year. Have you ever met anybody with the United, that's been helped with the United Way? I never have. Everybody I know that went to them for help got nothing. But the, uh, you know, the Salvation Army, the head guy, you know what he made a year? $12,500 a year. The top guy. Yeah. Guess where my money goes? All right. Now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Hebrews 3 6. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. We keep reading about, you know, the end. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Hebrews 3.14, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Huh. Okay. Hebrews 9.26, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. See, Christ did. He sacrificed himself. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause, for for this cause, 
was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. That's interesting. For for this cause with the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Are they talking about those that were dead in the spirit or dead in the flesh? You know, there's a, Jesus went to Abraham's bosom, which is where the righteous, um, the Old Testament saints went. I did a study on that. And it says that uh, Jesus preached unto the spirits. You know, I, I kind of wonder. Christ, Christ went to Abraham's bosom, preached unto Abel and Seth and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the twelve tribes and uh, Samson and David and Solomon and all the rest of them. And then he brought them out of the prison. So were they, I don't know, maybe both. You know, maybe it's those that were dead in spirit and dead in the flesh. I don't know. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer, and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Hmm. Oh yeah. You know, if you're if you're generous with those that are down and out, that's that's going to cover a multitude of sins. James five and eleven. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Oh yeah, the Lord has a lot of mercy, but he's also a God of wrath. Okay, 1 Peter 4.17 For the time has come that judgment, not wrath, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Turn to Isaiah chapter 62, verse 9. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together, shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Uh, in the United States, our standard is the flag. You know, just so you know. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Do you know that I believe this is talking about Christians? And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. All right, let's go back to Daniel chapter 6, verse 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear fear before the God of Daniel. Now this is talk Nebuchadnezzar speaking. For he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that shall that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ of first fruits, afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. So, as in Adam all die, and even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Revelation chapter 22, verse 4. I'm sorry, Revela Revelation chapter 21, and verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh, he that overcometh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed, blessed are they that do his commandments. Huh? But I was told all we got to do is just believe, right? We don't. Isn't that work salvation? Jesus said, "Blessed are they that do His commandments." Jesus gave us basically the three commandments: love the Lord, love thy neighbor, and and love each other. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another, even as I have loved you. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.